morning. Uh, we are starting with this uh, this morning's course, uh, which is within the future master's program uh, named Gender Competent Criminology. Uh, Professor Natalia Lukic will give the lectures, so I am giving the floor to her. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Dragica. I'm, um, I'm very glad to, to participate in this project and that this pilot master study has finally begun. Um, I was also pleasantly surprised to see the number of students interested um, generally for this uh, pilot master program, um, as well as for criminology as one of the optional courses. Um, so today uh, um, you will actually um, have the possibility to, to hear only my presentations and lectures. Um, although um, I uh, wrote this um, article for the textbook uh, gender, um, gender and Law together with two more professors. Uh, one is uh, Professor Susan Strand and uh, she is from Odebro University. Uh, she wrote actually this first part of the presentation that I will present today, that is um, gender and victimization. Uh, and uh, Professor Beatrice Cruz, she is from sorry, uh, uh, Cadiz University, and she wrote about um, gender perspective and penal policy of the courts. And my part of the text um, that I will also present today um, is uh, uh, gender and crime. So uh, what would be this uh, uh, gender perspective um, in crime? So when we <laughs> started working on this project and uh, writing together this article, um, we had to decide what actually to include. I see that uh, pretty much all disciplines in this project are to some extent related to gender. But uh, uh, criminology is, uh, well, I can say really, uh, 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 you, you almost have any question in criminology, every issue that uh, could be uh, analyzed from this gender perspective. Uh, so we had a difficult task, actually, to decide what to include in this uh, textbook. So um, that's why we decided actually to divide um, criminology, uh, that's how to say, um, in three different aspects. And I will try to cover some of the issues from um, these three different aspects because it's really not possible uh, to talk about, you know, everything that is gender related in criminology. Um, I suppose that among students that are uh, today here, um, there are also students who have probably past exam in criminology, but maybe students who uh, haven't done that. So I will try to, you know, not to go in too much details and I will try to explain maybe some basic, uh, so to say, issues in order to be more clear uh, to everyone. Uh, so please, if you have um, um, any question, uh, be free to interrupt, to ask. Uh, um, so um, we will start <coughs> with this uh, gender and uh, victimization. Um, I suppose that you all know what victimization is and um, that we define victimization as a process of becoming a victim. Um, so um, I um, decided to focus um, only on one aspect of this victimization perspective. Um, and that is actually domestic violence. And within uh, domestic violence, my focus will be on uh, intimate partner domestic violence. Uh, so um, uh, since I have only, only one hour at disposal for uh, this perspective, I didn't want to, you know, uh, tell a little bit uh, out of everything, but I decided to focus on uh, intimate partner rela relationships and uh, violence within this context. So I will um, exclude uh, intergenerational violence. So that would be violence of uh, parents against the children and vice versa. So I will focus on 
um, partners, uh, uh, spouses, um, ex-partners, you know, that is a, a broad, broad term. Um, so usually when we start um, uh, presenting uh, a, a topic uh, uh, of domestic violence, we uh, uh, want to emphasize the extent of this issue, the extent of this problem. Uh, there is a lot of uh, statistical data that c could be used. So I um, then tried to, to, to find something, you know, as precise as possible. So you have here on the presentation uh, data of the World Health Organization, and you see this percentage of 30% uh, percent of females uh, and who for at least once <coughs> during their lifetime experience physical... Mm -hmm. Do you hear me now? Oh, yes. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Okay, then I will start the, the, this for, for from beginning. Uh, uh, so I uh, I don't know uh, uh, what could you hear or not. I will then uh, say this again. So uh, when it comes to this uh, um, domestic violence within intimate partner relationships, we usually start with uh, presenting some statistical data uh, in respect to the extent of uh, this type of crime. Um, I uh, present it here, you can see on this slide, um, World Health Organization's data, um, according to which uh, approximately one-third, so 30% of females experience at least once during their lifetime physical or sexual violence. Uh, and it is interesting also to see this um, information of 38% um, of all homicides of females that uh, have been committed by their current or former partners. Um, uh, so this would be, how to say, a global picture. Um, and um, it is very difficult uh, uh, to, to, to say something more precise about this, uh, because in, um, uh, in this respect, you include countries from all over the world. That's why I tried to uh, also present some data when it comes to Europe. Um, and you see here <laughs> that we have uh, approximately 20 to 25 percent of females who experience physical violence at least once during their lifetime. 10 percent of them experience sexual violence. But when it comes to psychological violence, then you see that these rates are even higher. So altogether, it would be approximately, approximately 45. Uh, but when it comes uh, to, to, to these data, and I'm pretty much sure that uh, every day you can read, for example, in newspaper or, um, I don't know, here on television, um, something regarding this extent of um, uh, domestic violence, and especially when it comes to this intimate, intimate partner violence. But what is that we should ask ourselves before making some conclusions or accepting, you know, what we have uh, heard? Um, that would be methodology. And that is one part of criminology, to know how to conduct research. So we say, all right, it is 30%, but we should ask ourselves, um, what was the methodology used? How was the sample framed? Um, what was uh, what were our questions? So I uh, uh, intentionally wanted to to make this difference between different uh, forms of violence because you can see psychological violence must be you know widespread much more than physical or sexual violence. So I just say this in order that when you uh, someday read or I don't know hear something that you ask yourself something about methodology. This is one important part of criminology as a discipline that should teach students how to conduct the research uh, uh, based on some uh, scientific principles. Uh, so to know what do you research, what are your questions, etc. Uh, one of the questions uh, that is also important, I said here once, at least once during their lifetime. 
but you have research in which um, um, researchers ask, um, were you the, the, the victim in the past year or in the past five years? And then you get different results. Um, um, and it is uh, one thing if you include, for example, only European countries in the sample. It is the other thing if you include countries from all over the world. Uh, we, we shall see uh, the differences between uh, uh, North European countries, Western European countries, Eastern European countries, etc. Uh, uh, therefore, some authors ask um, how possible is actually to compare different cultures, different societies, etc. So I just want to mention this in order to, yes, we have these data that they show us that this is definitely something that is uh, a common problem, but we have to go, you know, beyond that, not to just say, okay, uh, percentages, but to think of all of these uh, questions when, you know, analyzing a, a phenomenon. I also I mentioned here Serbia <laughs> as well. <laughs> you have, I'm sorry, but I have problems with my throat for for two weeks, I can't solve it. Um, you have data of a victimological society. Um, this is not really a new one, how to say research, but still it is important that you can see uh, uh, what is the situation here in Serbia. And uh, uh, percentages are pretty much similar. And you have, for example, um, physical violence that is uh, represented in one third of the sample and sample was large and it included uh, 700 uh, females. So let's go further. Okay. So I um, wanted then uh, uh, to see what are the differences worldwide. And these are United Nations um, information and documents. Uh, they are from uh, 2021, so this is pretty much, to say, recent. Uh, and <laughs> this, uh, I, I suppose that you see, okay. <laughs> now I don't know what happened. Mm. Okay, that's it. Uh, so this slide, uh, I want to uh, just to uh, pay your attention, it uh, doesn't refer to intimate partner violence generally, only homicide. Why I have decided to present you data on homicide? Because we know, or uh, if you don't, then we, we will say that, that problem with domestic violence generally, that we have, uh, how to say, um, um, a huge, huge, that's a, a dark figure problem. What does this mean? That in many situations, victims just do not report that they have been victimized. So we can't know actually the real extent of domestic violence. But when it comes to homicide, that is something that's not so easily to, uh, uh, you know, cover um, uh, as it is situation with other less serious forms. That's why I decided to present data on homicide, because at least when it comes to this most serious crime, uh, we can be pretty much sure, you know, that uh, dark figure is not so high here as in other less serious forms. Uh, so this <laughs> in United Nations documents, this is something uh, uh, published under the term femicide. You probably have heard of this uh, uh, term femicide. It doesn't relate only to uh, domestic violence and intimate partner homicides. It goes much more beyond that. And it includes, for example, so-called honor killings, um, then killings of women accused of witchcraft, um, then gender-motivated homicides connected with armed conflict or with gangs. Then you have trafficking in persons and other forms of organized crime. So it is broader than just domestic violence. But you can you have here in the title that this is estimated number of female victims <coughs> of intimate partner family-related homicide by region in 2021. 
So this is actually focused on this um, domestic violence context, but I just wanted to show you and to, uh, to tell that femicide is just broader term than only this intimate partner or family related homicide. And you can see regions <laughs> here and what is uh, uh, important um, also for, from criminological point of view to mention here that uh, you have on this slide uh, absolute numbers. So uh, the, the, the uh, all females killed in different regions. But this is something uh, uh, from this point of view we cannot compare. We cannot compare because we need to have the number of citizens, you know. If you have, uh, for example, 10 females killed in Serbia and 10 females killed in Spain, that is completely different because Serbia has approximately 7 million and, uh, uh, and uh, Spain uh, has a lot, a lot more of that. Just to see, I have here... So to, to go back to this, uh, so you can see that in Europe is uh, approximately 2,500. What I also um, want to mention um, is um, that many countries actually uh, do not report data on the uh, sex of the victim of homicide. I have here precise data. And for example, as of 2021, um, only 133 UN member states have reported data that distinguish between male and female homicide victims. So that means that in approximately 36%, we had no information on the sex of the victim. So that's the first thing to, to keep in mind. And the second, that only uh, uh, 97 UN member states, so that would be approximately, how to say, half, provided information on the victim-perpetrator relationship or other contextual information. So why is this important? Because it's not only that we have uh, the information regarding sex of the victim, but the context is something that is very important because we cannot know whether the, for example, female victim, victim was uh, murdered, uh, I don't know, um, during robbery for example, that has nothing to do, for example, with this uh, gender-related context, or is it that that was the situation of, I don't know, domestic violence or something else? Um, in Serbia, we also have problem with that, so we can only use data of non-governmental organizations and not statistical data. When it comes to official statistical data, we do have data on um, uh, um, so sex of, uh, of the victim, but no context. So I cannot then conclude uh, what would be the number of females killed within this domestic violence context. I have only general, how to say, picture and general information. So I said it is not possible uh, to uh, make conclusions only on these absolute numbers, that we need something that is called crime rate. So you need to calculate this number of 2,500 in respect to population. And we, in most cases, use 100,000 population as a unit. And then uh, it is possible to compare extent of victimization uh, 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 between, uh, between countries and regions. So uh, <coughs> when it comes to this... <coughs> Uh, crime rate uh, approximately, so on a global level, it is 1.1. So 100 on 100,000 population, we have 1.1 killed females. Uh, when it comes to different regions, uh, the, highest, uh, the highest rate is in Africa. So we have their uh, rate of 2.5, that is 2.5 per 100, and I'm sorry, I wasn't precise, not general population, but female population. Um, 1.4 in uh, America, so that is North and South America. 1.2 Oceania, then a 0 0.8 in Asia, and 0 0.6 in Europe. So, but that is average. Uh, we shall see the differences. Okay, we can go further. 
This is something I also wanted to present, uh, differences by region when it comes to the uh, <coughs> share of <coughs> uh, uh, female uh, and male intimate partner or family related homicide. So you can see actually what would be the simplest conclusion when females are victims of homicide uh, to in large uh, 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 percentage, they are um, actually victims within this uh, domestic violence or partner uh, partner context. And that is... Uh, so you see, for example, here um, Europe, 51% uh, of all killed females uh, is within this context of intimate partner or family. When it comes to men, the situation is um, pretty much different and uh, less than 20% of all killed females are actually killed by their partners or other family members. And that is something obviously typical for, uh, you know, all regions or all, all over the globe we have this similar situation. Now, something <coughs> about... <laughs> Uh, differences I talked about that between regions. So you can see here northern, southern, and western Europe. So it uh, it is also then we have absolute numbers of killed females. And what is interesting that you uh, have a decreasing trend uh, in uh, northern and southern Europe. And according to United Nations. Uh, data uh, in the period from 2010 until 2020, we had a decrease of female homicides in Europe by almost 20%. It's not the same situation in, in other regions, but when it comes to Europe, uh, so uh, there is a, a decrease. And now when it comes to rates, so you see on the left side, 0 0.5, that would be an average, but you see some countries, I included countries that are in this project, for example, Italy, Spain, and Germany, so that you can see the differences between these European countries. So once again, this means that per 100,000 female population, you have 0 0.654, etc. killed females within this context. What about Eastern Europe? So here we have some countries from Eastern Europe. You see that the situation is uh, about the average European average in, in Russian Federation. So it is 1.6, whereas, for example, in some other uh, Eastern countries, you have, um, how to say, uh, a, a, better, a better situation in that same respect. So I, I like these graphs and statistical data. Uh, I want to, to pre present them. Uh, and now since um, well, many students on this course are from Serbia, I like to mention what is the situation in this country when it comes to um, female homicides within this context. And here, this is something that I calculated. So this is not that you can find on I don't know, uh, internet presentation of Statistical Office of the Republic of Serbia, but I used their data in order to calculate it. So, so you can see here in the past um, almost 20 years, uh, uh, this is rate of homicide in Serbia. This dark uh, red uh, uh, is the rate of killed males, and uh, this orange trend this is the rate of killed Females, as I said, this is uh, these are actually official data, so I have no information regarding context. But what we know that females are killed, and you uh, saw that uh, on previous slides, that in, in at least fifty percent or even more, they are killed within this context of domestic violence. Um, so <laughs> the first thing that we sh uh, we we see on this graph, and that we have a decreasing trend in last 20 years. So this is good news <laughs> to say this is not bad because uh, we are now, look, I don't know, do you see, because I have here, <coughs> okay. Uh, so you see here, what would be the rate in Serbia? So in past, how to say, five to six years, it is somewhere approximately one. So one killed 
female on 100,000 female population. I calculated this in respect to male and female population separately, but um, the, to have the most precise picture. So it is approximately one. Remember that I said that in Europe, generally is less than that. So obviously then that in some Western countries and Northern European countries, the situation is better and we have less killed females. Whereas on the other hand, in some Eastern countries, European countries, the situation is well, to say worse and there is a larger number of killed females. What is also interesting here to see similarity between these two trends of both killed males and females. This is something important. So obviously when we have an increase, for example, in 2007 or in 2013, this is not only an increase of killed females, but killed males as well. This uh, points to one, how to say, general conclusion that this is interrelated, that we cannot look at the number of killed females out of context, and out of, how to say, general violence within the society. Uh, what happened in 2007 and 13, for example, these are the years where, when we had mass uh, killings in Serbia, and this could something that could affect the, 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 uh, the uh, rate of, uh, of homicides. <coughs> so to, to uh, go back on this, two conclusions that we have decreasing trend, that situation is not how to say perfect that of course uh, uh, we should do more in order to go uh, uh, with this decreasing trend even so further uh, and the, the other thing that we must keep in mind that this is related and the, the, the how to say the overall number of homicides in one society affects males and females and that was for example situation in Serbia during 90s during 90s, because of all, well, how to say, uh, uh, social circumstances, we had an apparent increase in crime generally, in violent crime and homicides of both uh, males and females, and even more females than males, but still they all went in the same direction. Uh, so this is maybe uh, uh, something to, to, to know, you know, to... Uh, not to look at something separately. Natalia, can you explain us a little bit more? What, what does it exactly mean? That in the same uh, homicide we have uh, included... No, 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 this is not... No, uh, no, no, this is not in the same. Uh, this is general. So all homicides in our country in last 20 years are presented on this graph. So okay, all. just explain us this interrelation which you uh, Yes, but that interrelationship means that you have, at least in Serbia, increase in uh, uh, homicides uh, uh, where you have male victims, you have increase of killed females as well. So it's not that if you have uh, increased, uh, for example, uh, uh, male homicides where male are victims, uh, that nothing happens with females and vice versa. This is something in criminology that is recognized. It's not just in Serbia, but uh, overall, something that is called Verko rule. And that means that you have, uh, uh, how to say, uh, we cannot uh, talk about causal rela uh, relationships in social sciences. It is really difficult. This is not uh, chemistry or physics, etc. But there are some trends uh, that are uh, observed, uh, uh, not just in one, but in many countries. And obviously the situation is similar um, in Serbia, because you can see these lines, they follow each other. Excuse me, I have one question. Okay. Uh, yeah, Larissa. Uh, so uh, if I understood this causal relation, so basically if there is increase of overall violence in society, then we have also increase in femicide, yes? Uh, uh, generally, how to say yes, yeah, although generally I, uh, speaking. generally speaking, but I have to say that some authors also say when you have um, uh, an increase in violence, especially increase in homicide generally, that it will even affect males uh, as victims 
uh, more than females. And I mentioned, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, that because depends. The percentage men, uh, men are part of this uh, violence, homicide rate, etc. Yeah, especially if you have, for example, uh, a lot of young males because uh, uh, youth uh, is something also related to the uh, crime rate and rate of homicides. And we know that from statistical data of the age of uh, homicide offenders uh, and homicide victims. But I mentioned case of Serbia during this so-called period of uh, transition during 90s, that although, you know, we should expect even larger number of killed males uh, uh, in that situation, uh, in percentages, females were... Uh, how to say more uh, uh, more often killed that doesn't mean in absolute numbers in absolute numbers you always have more males as offenders more males as victims of homicide but i say in that specific period in yeah, percentages in yeah. percentages that increase of killed females was even higher than um, increase of killed males but uh, uh, but also yeah. uh, also confirms this um, uh, how to say this assumption we had um, uh, not really normal social circumstances in that period all of that affected crime rate and affected increase of violent uh, uh, crime included homicide but uh, uh, so we had increase of both uh, male victims and female victims and I always want to <coughs> emphasize this to students because um, they are bombed every day with, um, you know, covers in newspapers. And we hear that practically, I don't know, um, in every three to four days, one female is killed within this context. And I say, all right, uh, yes, there is a problem, but let's look at this problem a, a little bit more in details. Let's see, for example, these crime trends, what was happening in last 10 to 15 years. I don't want to go even further. In one article, I calculated this crime rate for the last 70 years to see what was the situation with female and male homicides. But we have to look at this in more details. Then there is a question, and you can, of course, uh, participate and uh, say, what do you think about that? Uh, you hear <coughs> that we have problem with this uh, uh, domestic violence and kid killed females, but look at this trends and how then would you explain this uh, decrease you know what is then happening is this the result of for example law on the protection of domestic violence we enacted that law uh, several years ago uh, media campaigns um, encouragement of victims to report uh, maybe one reason could be related to um, aging of population. Uh, what do you think? I mean, if you want to to participate and say something, if you have, because I suppose, and that's uh, why I intentionally have chosen this topic because it's, I know uh, uh, when I um, talk about uh, that with my students, they are very interested that they have their opinion. You know, so if if you want something to to say and to participate, yeah, okay. Uh, hello. Well, uh, I think that um, enacting a law is, uh, was the first step. Uh, also, uh, talking about uh, uh, crime related in, in media also encouraged women to, uh, to be uh, brave, but I also think that we need to, to do more. Um, I think that the, our mechanisms legally are, are not as, as effective as they should be. Uh, like the, the ban of the approach between uh, female and, and male. Um, and uh, I think that these results could be better, um, taking into consideration everything that we, we have done after uh, enacting this uh, act that uh, prohibits the, the violence. Uh, when it comes to this law, uh, maybe something also interesting that we have approximately every year 25,000 reports. 25,000 reports of this uh, domestic violence in accordance with that law. That is uh, approximately 25% of all reported persons for crimes in the country. Only that. And we have approximately 1,700 uh, these bans, restrictive measures that you talk about. 17 to 18 hundred imposed measures. Um, 
So that is maybe the first step. I, I don't want to go in details with that. I will mention something in that respect and how this is related to this gender perspective when it comes to the lecture of uh, uh, criminal courts. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I can agree, of course, with you that it's not that we had something we should be satisfied with, um, that there are a lot of other things to do, but at least we have decreasing trends in uh, in past several, several years, um, according to statistical data. I also wanted to show you, uh, I mentioned that we have some non-governmental <laughs> organizations that do conduct research. So they obtain data from media, from media covers, they analyze cases, and then they say this is femicide or it's not femicide, this is, you know, in domestic violence context or not. So here <laughs> we have absolute number of killed females in Serbia also in last 10 or 11 years. The orange trend would be all killed females, so all killed females, and this dark uh, red uh, is actually uh, 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 the number of killed females within domestic violence context. Uh, so also there are similarities between uh, these two trends and uh, you can see in uh, in past several years when it comes to <coughs> absolute number also a slightly um, decreasing trend. But Natalia, just to ask, okay. so in absolute numbers this year, up to this month and the last year, we really have a, a huge number of reported uh, killings of women of the, the families. So, for, com comparatively speaking, what you, what could you tell us? Uh, I will. I would first uh, <coughs> wait for the data for this year, uh, uh, but approximately you have. Uh, in absolute numbers, you have oscillations. In one year, for example, you have 40 killed females. Next year, you have 25. Then next year, you have 30. That's why the average number in 10-year period, for example, is something that we as researchers need, you know, not to rely only on one year. If you have, for example, a mass murder, and it was situation 2007, 2013, one person killed 10 persons. That is important. If you have 100 uh, homicides in, in, in Serbia in one year, 10 killed persons is important in percentages. Uh, <coughs> and that is absolute number. Absolute number in relation to uh, citizens, the number of females in one society is also something that we calculate in order to compare with other countries. And I said that situation in Serbia is, when it comes to Europe, Somewhere in the middle, <laughs> somewhere in the middle, Western countries have better results. Some Eastern European countries, you, you saw what the situation, for example, in Russian Federation, it is 1.6 and here in Serbia is approximately one. So I say somewhere, we are somewhere in the middle, but I uh, like to ask students what else um, we should change and improve. Uh, you know, because crime is something that is related to many other uh, factors. When it comes to homicide, what is one of the, uh, uh, how to say, um, rules also? If you have <coughs> a high rate of inequalities, social inequalities, gender inequalities, etc., then you will have higher rate of crimes, higher rate of homicide. So, you know, you should work on other fields in order to improve something that is a consequence, so to say, and that is uh, that is a crime. So uh, 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 it's not that we can only look at. And that's why I uh, wanted to, to share this data and to say that there is relation between general violence and violence against females, because if you have violent society to say or violence that is widespread, it will definitely affect uh, females as well. Uh, all right, then uh, we have different <coughs> different forms of uh, intimate partner violence. That is something that I suppose is 
uh, very well known. Uh, there is difference between physical, sexual, psychological, and some authors also say economic violence. Um, when it comes to physical violence, it, it includes uh, different, you know, kinds of injuries, um, less serious or severe um, impairments, uh, fatal outcomes, or uh, that. Uh, then sexual violence also it can include different forms. What is, for example, interesting that um, 20 years ago or so, I'm not uh, so sure about the date, that rape in a marriage was not forbidden in our country. It was not a crime, for example. That is uh, interesting to mention. Psychological violence. Uh, you can have a, a different act that uh, could be uh, uh, that that could be uh, said to, to represent this uh, psychological violence, insulting, ignoring, uh, mocking, complaining, threats, intimidation, control, isolation, uh, contempt, blaming, child manipulation, verbal assault, etc., etc. So this is something that is also recognized in our criminal code. So you also uh, have this uh, as a, as a crime. And uh, economic violence uh, that actually some see as a, how to say, mechanism to um, gain control over victim, to gain control over females is, is to use this type of uh, uh, violence. Uh, I wanted also here to mention that in um, uh, many cases, domestic violence, this intimate partner, uh, violence is not just an episode. It's not just, um, how to say, an incident. It's not just something that happened once and that's it. Although male perpetrators want to, uh, and they, uh, you know, tend to define uh, a violence they commit in, in that manner. Uh, but you can see uh, statistical data. This is Center for Social Work in Belgrade, and uh, it shows that in almost 70% of all um, registered cases, this violence lasted between one and five years, and in almost 20% between six and 10 years. So uh, obviously that, uh, you know, it, it is something that lasts. Um, and what is also important, uh, that it affects children. Uh, even though children are, for example, not victims of physical injuries, uh, it is enough that they are present, that they, uh, um, that, that they see their pa parents uh, uh, fight or that one parent is a victim of the other, so that is enough for them uh, in, and to have many negative consequences. And you know that in criminology there are theories of social learning. And uh, that explained that, you know, if you have children who, um, um, who are present and who, who see these cases, that to accept, you know, the way how to behave toward the um, other gender, right? Uh, so uh, um, you see here data in 30 to 60 percent of families where one or both parents are violent, there is also a child abuse. Uh, and uh, in families in which women, due to victimization, had to seek help from the police or leave the home, 75 to 100% of cases, children were victims of violence as well. So um, this is something that we have to keep in mind, that this is not only related to partners, but it affects children to a large, uh, large extent. Uh, it can be real uh, victimization in terms of psychological, physical, sexual violence, or just, you know, uh, and uh, I, maybe you have heard something uh, about that uh, on uh, criminal law classes and how, you know, this is recognized in criminal law, but uh, uh, this is from criminological point of view, something that I also wanted to share and to emphasize. Uh, before I start with this, um, uh, this classification. Uh, Why well, I wanted to <coughs> mention this classification because it is important to know that uh, there are differences between perpetrators. We cannot put them all, how to say, in the same category. That doesn't mean that we uh, want to exclude them or anything like that, but we need this criminological classification and to see whether there are possible differences 
in order to know what uh, Jovana uh, said about this law on violence protection, do we need the same uh, measures for all? Um, is it something like, you know, one, uh, <coughs> one, uh, one measure fits all or something, or that we should make a distinction between these um, categories of uh, perpetrators? If you want to read something more about that, I can share one article that was written by Professor Strand because she wrote about um, family-only perpetrators. Um, and it is uh, very interesting to see what are characteristics of uh, these offenders who um, commit uh, violence only within this context. So this would be how to say a broad distinction between two categories. You have uh, family only violent offenders and you have you know category that is called antisocial perpetrators or general perpetrators. So that these would be persons who um, um, you know uh, um, are violent not only um, against uh, family members but outside this family, family circle that is uh, that is also imp that is really important to mention and when it comes to uh, classification you will have this on your uh, on your slide so the first one <coughs> is so called intimate terrorism uh, some say that uh, these are ex actually instrumental uh, cases of violence uh, the most serious type uh, it doesn't have to mean that, you know, all deaths and uh, the most severe consequences are exclusively related to this type. No, that doesn't mean that. But they are the most serious uh, in respect to tactics that they use. They want to gain control over complete life of the victim. So they will, for example, forbid her to go out, to have um social networks to go to work to have her mobile phone uh intimidate her i say her i'm sorry i have to be gender neutral but uh, just in many cases actually uh, females uh, do suffer uh, this type of intimate partner violence <coughs> and it's not really the truth uh, vice versa so if they are violent females usually they are not violent within this context so they not uh, they do not terrorize how to say although i uh, i'm not sure about the term you know uh, uh terrorizing because that's something similar to uh, terrorism uh i would say terror yes but terror and terrorism are just not the same uh but you know wh what i mean uh by that uh so <coughs> this be, this would be uh the first uh the first uh category um um then <clears throat> Uh, then we have common couple violence. So uh, maybe this is something that you probably saw on television, reality programs, etc. That they fight, that they throw things on each other, etc. So that would be, you know, this common couple violence. Uh, and that, yeah, that's something that happens. I remember when I was doing research ten years or so, and that I. Uh, came across uh, different verdicts on this uh, intimate partner uh, uh, domestic violence. And you wouldn't believe you have, for example, people in their 70s, in their 80s, who fight, who insult each other, who throw things at each other, etc. So that would be a common <coughs> couple violence. Although, as I already mentioned, um, it is not true that within this type it's not possible to have serious consequences. Yes, it is possible. You know, if you use a, a heavy object and you throw that heavy object on the head, you know, on your partner, you can kill him or her. It's possible, you know, in uh, uh, both situations. Uh, so uh, just I want to <coughs> say that uh, we shouldn't relate uh, consequences to these types. But for females, the first one would be definitely more difficult, intimidating, etc. Uh, then uh, what is uh, uh, very common, this is a violence of resistance. Uh, 
Um, so that is uh, in the simplest way to say when females kill their partners, they uh, do that to protect themselves or to protect their children. So these are the situations in which they probably have previously been victims of this intimate partner terror. And then at one moment they reacted and they killed their partners. Um, sometimes that happens, um, you know, in uh, circumstances that are not really mitigating for females. If they do that, for example, why he uh, sleeps, then this could be treated as an uh, aggravated homicide. And um, I'll say something more about that when I, uh, uh, at, uh, in respect to lecture of, of criminal courts. But um, um, this is the, the, the situation of this uh, resistance violence. And fi finally, mutual violent control. But as I, well, as I already said, uh, that females, if they do commit uh, uh, violence within this context, usually this is not that they want to, they are not actually, some say, not capable of um, terrorizing their partners in the same way because it is not sometimes easy, you know, to to to, to do the same thing to, to males um, than to, to females when it comes to consequences. Although we can say that females, yes, they do uh, uh, commit uh, uh, crimes within this context, but when it comes to consequences, so for example, physical injuries, there is never equality between male and female victims because they suffer much more severe physical uh, injuries. And once again, as I already said, in more than 50% or even more of all killed females, it is in this uh, context. So the statistical data that um, that confirm that. Uh, what else? So uh, uh, why I um, uh, why I said <coughs> said this? Uh, because in criminological literature there are many authors who say, "All right, males <coughs> are <coughs> perpetrators; they are violent, but females are violent as well." And they have conducted research. They uh, have conducted interviews, etc., and they came to a conclusion that females can be and that they are also violent within this context. But as I already said, there are differences. Uh, yes, when it comes to psychological violence, I suppose that the rate of, how to say, female perpetrators uh, uh, will be, for example, for example, higher. But <coughs> when it comes to these other, especially serious forms, there are differences between uh, between gender. Uh, Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. I wanted to add something about this common couple of violence, something that, that was about. I did my apprenticeship and uh, a prosecutor's office, and we had an uh, old couple uh, who uh, had called the police for several months because they were arguing about a TV program that they are going to, to, to watch. And that was a little bit, um, I don't know, we, we didn't know what, uh, what to do. Uh, is that going to become a bigger crime, or they are just fighting and calling the police? <laughs> Yes. Um, uh, it can be. It, it can become something serious. Uh, uh, when I did uh, research together with uh, with my students, it was a research on homicide. We came across one verdict where a female was uh, charged with uh, homicide, attempt on homicide, because if I remember good, she used a drill and uh, uh, throw the drill uh, on, on his head and, uh, um, and caused a severe injury. And it was interesting that he didn't want to divorce and he said during uh, proceedings that he loves her and that he wants to stay with her, etc. So that's why I say you can have serious consequences, but uh, the, the manner, uh, you know, um, perpetrators treat victims in the first case, how they control them, um, uh, the fear they, they, they feel, it is completely different. That's why I say that uh, this is the, the uh, something that we should make distinction. Uh,
Mm -hmm. um, this you you will have this presentation because I can go in details with everything. But uh, what is important uh, here, for example, this is this model of cyclical violence. Eleanor Walker she suggested this explanation. How does it happen, uh, and what are the stages? And this is a good explanation. Uh, for females who even they suffer, they decide to stay in that uh, violent relationship and not to end uh, that violent relationship. So this is something that um, maybe I could then, since prof <laughs> Professor um, reminds me that we have several minutes left before I start with the, the other lesson, maybe I could ask you what do you think, because I know all possible explanations when it comes to this type of domestic violence, what, what do you think? Do you think I will give you two possibilities and then you could, for example, discuss or say what you think? Uh, so the first one uh, would be, uh, do you think that uh, people, persons who commit this violence against their partners, in many cases when it comes to physical violence, these are men, do they commit these crimes because they have some um, individual traits? So does it... Uh, uh, refer to individual, how to say, pathology? Um, does it have to do mainly with, for example, alcohol abuse, some uh, psychological traits, um, level of education, uh, of employment? Or do you think what feminists say, that this is not just the violence against um, partners, but that partners, female partners, are victims because they are females? Uh, because uh, males, they uh, in uh, especially when it comes to patriarchal societies, they want dominance, control, and they want to have this control over females as part of their how to say homes, uh, uh, and they look at them as their I don't know objects, and uh, if they uh, need, they can use then violence to obtain that control. So, do you think that we could um, relate? that we could uh, 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 use only, you know, this with we in individual how to say model to say there are, you know, some characteristics of those who commit, because it's definitely true that not all, you know, men do commit these crimes, or does it have to do with some other explanations? For example, this feminist approach um, that relates to, to uh, social values, attitudes, and... Uh, uh, how to say the ways how to achieve these uh, values because this is something that's not a new phenomenon you know domestic violence has existed you know for, for forever uh, um, so that, um, if you if you have um, okay Joanna. I think that uh it can be both, is that the, the okay. correct answer. I think that there is always something individual about the perpetrator that uh, uh, derives them to, to, uh, to, to be violent when it comes to women. Uh, but the, on, the, on the other side, I think that uh, uh, patriarchy here is something that, um, that really dominates here and uh, that, um, uh, that, that uh, grief of a man to be the, the main in the house. Uh, but also I would like to distinguish something more when, when you um, was uh, when you were talking about economic violence, I think that's uh, maybe one of the biggest problem here in in, uh, in Serbia because women are in most cases um, financially dependent from their male um, partners, and that is why they are not willing to maybe report the violence, to, to, to leave the house because they do not have um, more opportunity uh, to work. And that is something that is connected with the labor market, with opportunity with the, at, the, at the labor market, with the uh, gender discrimination. So it can be also one of those fe uh, feminist theories that uh, she is uh, female, uh, she is maybe lack of some support. To, to work, to, uh, to uh, educate, and that, that is something that's, that can be connected with the, uh, with the, with the fact that uh, women uh, keep that violence in, in, uh, in secret. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joanna. We have Tatiana. I think that Tatiana raised hand. So, Tatiana. Uh, it's Tiana. Uh, I saw. I, uh, sorry, I saw Tatiana. I uh, I saw oh, the. Uh, I saw the Tatiana raised hand. But uh, please. Okay. 
I would even go with the feminist approach uh, because we have also the females who are in a high uh, a level of education, very good pay, uh, pay positions, uh, good jobs, and they also have a situation when they're having the domestic violence, they're experiencing domestic <laughs> violence. So I would go with the first approach. There's a lot of a variety of uh, uh, causes that can uh, go with uh, which can cause the, the domestic violence uh, and also it can exclude the psychological background, the family background of the person who is uh, harassing other person and uh, I would definitely go with, with the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. And uh, Sorry, just I, I think that someone else raised hand here or, or our online participants. Sorry, I can't uh, see. Uh, no, no, no. Just to see. Uh -huh, yes, we have a message here. Sorry. Uh, we, okay. uh, there are always exceptions, um, but pathologists are often used as an excuse to justify. Sorry, to justify. Uh, to justify. Uh, sorry, but uh, justify violence against women. Therefore, we need to be careful with, 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 <laughs> with, with. <laughs> And with our statements at this point, yes, I, I, um, I please, what's your name? Uh, Larissa, I came now, <laughs> I was online. Uh, I actually wanted to point precisely toward this, what uh, this uh, participant said. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go absolutely with both contexts. For me, uh, even this, uh, this cultural context is important because it's a, it's a way, uh, so this patriarchy is a way of uh, normalizing this kind of uh, violence, which co finally can end up in, in, in femicide. Uh, and also this cultural context, which is very important, is um, actually uh, society's response toward this kind of um, homicides. For instance, uh, we can see here that this society is very prepared to respond loudly and heavily on child murder, but it won't respond in the same way on femicide. So this society has issue with this very definition of the term femicide. I know, I hear it. And it has issue uh, because they think that uh, like fe uh, feminist, uh, how should I say, feminist uh, movement appropriated this kind of uh, homicide for their like political purpose or whatever so it's one on one side it's heavy burdened with uh, uh, with a lot of, uh, of political cultural values on both sides the concept itself and the society which doesn't recognize this as a, as a culture said isolated phenomenon and particular phenomenon that is violent the phenomenon of bettered women syndrome which United States uh, did recognize and uh, they deal with it uh, as a separate part, uh, part within their crime criminal law whatever so uh, I would also add that I don't know I do not believe in neutral laws when it comes to society and cultural context needs to take to be taken into consideration thank you Thank you, Larissa. Uh, well, uh, I don't know whether we should further this uh, discussion or maybe to leave it uh, after uh, after but three classes. Be, no. It's much it's much better to go on now with go the discussion. Now. Okay, and then I'll forget I'll, about we will forget about it. Di divided from yes, yeah, so because uh, through the work it became obvious that method methodologically speaking, it is much better to include. Uh, mm -hmm discussion uh, okay. within each Alessandro. unit okay. uh, instead of waiting separating and wait, waiting. waiting so for the end. Okay. forget about Okay, first what uh, Jovana mentioned that we have problems with, for example, um, unemployed females. I think that I have here some uh, data in that, uh, that respect. Uh, no, I'll go to you. You can see all of this on presentation because Definitely, I prepared too much. <laughs> uh, uh, these are factors. This is something that will also be. Uh, yes, in Belgrade. Uh, just... uh, 
this was one <laughs> research on homicides uh, generally in Belgrade, but of course included females. Um, I didn't conduct this research, but I think it's important because it included, I think, 1,000 cases. So uh, it would be a representative sample. Uh, so when it comes to this, for example, employment, you uh, see that uh, uh, that uh, females, two-thirds of the victims were employed. So we have uh, <laughs> definitely... Uh, uh, how to say, it would be interesting to see occupational structure, you know, what they uh, work, um, etc. But um, there are some theories that point to this, because I want to relate it what, with this, what uh, you did say. Um, uh, this is so-called resource theory. Um, and it can be interpreted in, how to say, uh, in two different directions. The first one would be the person within the relationship who has more resources. When I say more resources, we mean by that, I don't know, employment, financial resources, status in a society, etc. cetera, are things that, you know, it is, um, um, that, has, that uh, violence is something that, that, that is, um, um, how to say, um, can be used uh, uh, um, because he or she has more resources. Uh, uh, the other point is that those who lack resources feel frustration. Uh, and then maybe for these cases, if you have, for example, employed female, that she earns more than a male, that he has no employment or I don't know, you know, these kind of situations, uh, that this frustration, etc., would be explanation then for uh, violence in order to get control, you know, to obtain control because maybe he thinks that he loses control because he lacks resources. That I say, there are different interpretations and different explanations. But I would agree that to a large extent, patriarchy is related to um, uh, domestic violence. But still, we have to look at differences. You know, it's not only gender inequality. You know, it has to do with in countries when you have different races, it comes to race inequality. And then there is a question why, for example, black um, uh, females um, get uh, more severe sentences than white females. You know, for example, uh, some uh, some say then you have the uh, um, intersection with class, class or I don't know, social strata, whatever. Um, um, and then uh, that has to do with what you have said, the reaction. Is there a difference when it comes to different perpetrators and different offenders of the same crime? Does that have to do with uh, with class or something? So this is intersectional approach that we should take all inequalities within one society, not just gender inequality, but race, but in Serbia, so maybe more class, etc. So all inequalities, uh, and then to try to interpret and to explain. When it comes to this reaction, that is important, really, it, it does. Um, but I would like, for example, personally to know um, what are the differences in sentencing uh, when it comes to uh, killed males and killed females. You know, what are the sentences of the courts? Because I think that we lack yes. data for that. You cannot conclude that based only on statistical data of the Office or of the Republic of Serbia. Uh, you need, uh, actually, you need verdicts. You need all details. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need to use statistical programs and then to see. I I, I would do that. <laughs> yes, uh, we 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 you, have. You don't have that. No, data. no. But that would be that would be. I mm -hmm. think the first step before we decide what to do uh, next. It's not like America has this or uh, uh, England has that. You know, uh, the thing is, uh, can we compare? You know, ourselves with all other countries. And is it a solution to to say they have this? I will take that. Uh, we constantly go in this repressive manner, and I'm just you know uh, worried that at some point <laughs> we will uh, we will have no more options. If you, for example, introduce life term imprisonment, if you introduce I don't know femicide as a um, aggravated homicide, etc. For example, it doesn't matter. So you go in constantly in the same direction, and at some point you will be like, what else? We cannot introduce that penalty. 
<laughs> you know, because we are in the Council of Europe. So what then? That is why this gender sensitization is crucial. Gender race and gender awareness on all levels of society. That, that is why it's, I mean, we are not like just uh, amending our penal system to, I don't know, to the point of yeah, annihilating everything or, you know, constantly having um, the courts which are completely oppressed with new penalties and the judges who don't understand the specifics of the cases. So it's very, it's very complex. But yeah. So I. I will you. Okay, thank you. So I would follow uh, the comments given online and something what uh, Natalia also said and Diolana and the others. So definitely the feminist approach is, I would say, uh, mostly relevant in this understanding the basis of uh, the gender, uh, of, of the homicide, uh, femicide, gender-based violence. Uh, in, in a sense that patriarchy in, has been inheriting violence towards those subordinated as its uh, internal essential <coughs> feature, meaning uh, uh, violence towards uh, women, violence, violence of parents towards uh, children. It does not necessarily mean that in each patriarchal family whenever during the history of the dominance of patriarchy we have in each particular uh, case that but that that is something inherent so that's the first point uh, the second one is that some, one of the colleagues mentioned that even one of those online participants mentioned that we, we, we have been witnessing uh, a severe violence uh, among uh, very well educated uh, um, male partners, etc., etc. So, when we are speaking about uh, contemporary and uh, contemporary, modern and contemporary societies, we, we speak, as I said at the first lecture, uh, uh, about crossing between the patriarchal heredity and uh, different aspects of emancipation. So, it means that patriarchal uh, element of contemporary uh, partnerships, uh, marriages, uh, families, etc., etc., uh, has been playing the role of that, what I called inherent uh, capacity for uh, co committing violence towards those weaker, m more vulnerable male, uh, females and children. Uh, and then, uh, so the second wave of feminism, radical feminism, puts the focus with good, very good reasons on patriarchy er, as the cause of these, uh, all, uh, uh, besides other things, uh, causes of violence. Then the third, different third wave feminisms incorporated this analysis of uh, uh, patriarchy as uh, the axis and patriarchy versus em emancipation as the axis, but then also in, in included different uh, manifestations of what uh, Natalia spoke about at the beginning when she gave the statistical data about different parts of the global uh, society. So the third feminisms uh, point to different uh, manifestations of this dialectic <clears throat> Uh, between patriarchy and emancipation in different parts of the world, more exactly in this context about different uh, amounts and manifestations of violence against women, also children in different parts of the society. And also third wave feminisms introduce into the methodological approach this intersectional uh, approach, meaning that gender-based violence has always to be put into the context of other sources of power relations. Uh, Natalia spoke about that, but it's very important that we understand that this intersectional approach is gender-based, better articulated uh, gender-based approach nowadays in, in the criminology uh, and other legal 
uh, fields and uh, social sciences also. Thank you. Uh, you wanted to say something, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> Regarding, uh, Jovana mentioned one of the reasons why the violence is portrayed or uh, um, executed. So we also saw that all of these um, women are employed, but also have children. So also dependent on children not to be to leave them is also one of the reasons. And <clears throat> based on this research that I'm reading, is also the fear of the perpetrator of the violence, um, of the man who did the violence, and also this wider social environment. How is it portrayed and talked about in the media, for example? And also we spoke about these individual traits. We also have the this psychological dependence of the to the per perpetrator. So also that. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, well, I think that we uh, opened a lot of, of issues here. Um, feminists, they said, you know, that it has also to do with masculinity. Uh, and there are some theories of masculinity as well. Uh, what is accepted and what is expected uh, real to say masculine behavior within one society? Is that uh, hegemonic masculinity? or there are differences, um, and if it is power, competitiveness, control, um, etc., you know, then it is control not only when it comes to earning money, employment, etc., but also at home. So it has to be related with that. Um, and then maybe this would give us explanation of the relation between male crime against other persons, not just females, and then against females as well. Um, you, Professor, said something about inheritance, but uh, I would say, you know, that would uh, point to maybe biology, genetics, or something like that, but social learning within families, uh, I would say that has, a, a, that is important. And that is why I mentioned that it is, um, that this intimate partner violence affects children. It's not that they are victims, but they learn. They learn how to behave tomorrow uh, uh, with their partners, uh, etc. That is this social learning process, and it has to do with patriarchy uh, because you know these are values that reflect true families, right? Because family is part uh, of society. So um, I would uh, agree that uh, yes, these patriarchal values um, are important in understanding, but with this, what I already said, we must take into account other circumstances. It's not only gender. You know, it's then the question how you will, for example, uh, sentence someone who killed, for example, poor female, unemployed female. You have uh, domestic violence within that context. And what will happen to those who are, how judges like to say, not for prison, although they commit uh, serious crimes who have... A high social status, etc. Not just when it comes to uh, intimate partner violence. That's uh, that's why I say it's everything is related. Just uh, uh, I, I can give only one example to confirm this. We for 15 years have we have in this country law on criminal liability of legal persons, but that is we say in practice that is that that doesn't work. So you can read. Uh, 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 air as it is, or you know, <laughs> uh, drink contaminated water, whatever. Nobody will be liable. No legal uh, person. Just, just to to say that you know, you cannot look only at gender inequality. This is something that has to do with uh, other social inequalities. Of course, I wanted to add that uh, gender statistics <laughs> statistics say that um, all, most of all, uh, for child abusers and child killers are the people who were heavily abused in their, in their youth. So the question remains, when we have these children who come out of this, uh, this situation when we had homicide and the violence, uh, are they completely left or the system takes them in and they go through social, psychological help 
within the period of like to say 10 years or whatever i mean that's essential that that and maybe related to that you know when we uh want to solve and to to improve the situation uh maybe you you have observed that um uh you know almost everyone speak about criminal code and what we need to do in order to change criminal code etc but what about preventive measures, preventive programs that would be aimed at improving, for example, raising children, educating uh, parents how to raise their children because you have problems in that respect, not only when it comes to victimization of children, neglect, and that, uh, how to say, wrong type of raising children, but you have overprotective parents who have you know, this, no, no discipline at all, uh, who, who will leave their children to do whatever they want, etc. And in uh, domestic violence cases, social workers recognize both problems. So both, uh, both cases, not just victimization neglect, but this as well. Uh, this would be something like, uh, 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 parenting without any limitations, without any discipline. Uh, etc. But preventive measures uh, also this is something that you uh, uh, mentioned. All right. <laughs> Do, uh, uh, does this research cover the representation of career criminals and members of organized crime? I'm asking because the popular culture seems to uh, have this myth and taboo of, of domestic violence and, and violence against women among career criminals and, and members of organized crime, while as far as I know, the real-world crime statistics show the exact, the exact opposite. Uh, but I didn't understand well, which research. Uh, the research you've represented, did, uh, did, uh, did the data, data analysis cover the representation and distinction of career criminals and members of organized crime in this statistic? Uh, because I showed here several results, that's why I asked, uh, did you mean this uh, homicide research in Belgrade or general statistical data? Any really. Uh, okay. Uh, when it comes to statistical data, I really uh, can't know uh, characteristics of a particular offender. In statistical general data, you just have the number of those who are reported, who are accused, and who are convicted. So that's the number. And then general characteristics for all of them, you have data, for example, in respect to previous criminal records, but not for a particular person. Uh, you know, so all who are in one year in this country reported, accused, and convicted. That means criminal careers, uh, career criminals as well. But I, uh, you know, based only on statistical data, I cannot make a distinction because in Serbia, if you want to do that, you have to go to court and you have to ask a permission to get verdicts and then to sit there and analyze every single verdict in order to see, uh, you know, whatever you are interested in. Statistical data just do not uh, give you that uh, uh, possibility. Um, uh, I, <laughs> I said <laughs> that there is a difference between uh, general two categories of um, perpetrators who commit this domestic violence. You have, uh, uh, how to say, less serious form or less serious category of those who commit uh, uh, crimes only within this domestic violence context, but you have people who are, you know, who they are ready to kill their spouses, but they will kill, you know, people in the club, in the, uh, in front of the stadium, whatever. So they are antisocial. Uh, that's how they are called in the literature. They are antisocial in respect that they are more violent, generally more violent towards victims within this domestic violence context that you have more problems, for example, with um, substance abuse, uh, psychopathology, etc., etc. That's why I uh, mentioned this article that was uh, published by, by co-author of this um, text in Law and Gender, Susan Schrant, she wrote about only uh, family-only perpetrators. So there is a distinction that can be made between 
uh, broadly speaking, these two uh, categories. And that is uh, important that you mentioned because people think that, you know, if uh, somebody will, for example, kill female, that that's it, that there is some kind of a specific category of those who kill females only, but many of them will kill other people as well. They are, uh, <coughs> for, uh, and in these cases, you could, for example, use these uh, masculinity theories. Uh, he, uh, for example, gets out and then he quarrels with uh, another guy in front of the bar because, I don't know, uh, of the parking uh, lot or something, and he takes out his gun and shots, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's the way he will handle uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this problem that he, he will, you know, behave like a man. He will show him who is he, etc., etc. And he is capable, of course, of uh, killing uh, uh, his spouse or I don't know, other, other person as well. So there is a, a category of those who are um, uh, antisocial. Um, and uh, in, in many cases, then you have also relation with this type or this context that is, uh, uh, how I said, instrumental violence, terrorizing a victim, uh, um, uh, having control over the victim. And then in these cases, you have victims who are reluctant to report. And what they do, they report and then they uh, change their mind because they fear. But then uh, once again, they report, you know, uh, because they uh, they fear. Um, Okay, <laughs> Johanna, please. Uh, I would li just like to, uh, to, to ask, uh, um, is there a Scandinavian syndrome when we talk about children that watch uh, the, the violence in the house and there are victims in the house? I cannot recall from your lecture from the second year. And then they um, accept that kind of violence when they grown up. Uh, Scandinavian model. Yes. yes, Scandinavian syndrome. And then, uh -huh, uh, Stockholm syndrome. Ah, uh, yeah, Stockholm syndrome. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Johanna has passed exam in criminology, and she remembers very well about Stockholm syndrome. But it had to do with other, with other, yes, uh, uh, crimes uh, in the cr criminology textbook. Yes, you remember very, very well. <laughs> but yes, but that is so, uh, you know, <laughs> related. There are different theories that could be used to explain. Uh, behavior of a child later on when that child grows up. You have, for example, John Bowlby's theories, etc. But, you know, read about that in this uh, textbook and on presentations. I uh, uh, I just wanted here uh, to mention that this is important in terms of this, um, how to say, uh, social learning and acceptance of something as normal as usual uh, uh, and everything starts in um, uh, within the family. Uh, that's why uh, it's important to, uh, to to mention that. And you have also research that, you know, uh, dealt with uh, uh, the mother and child relationship and how that mother-child relationship affects uh, later on in, in life relationships with partners and uh, domestic violence. So there is a lot of um, things when it comes to uh, these parenting styles, etc. Um, okay. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Maybe Natalia, just to uh, mention once again and uh, explain uh, to us that most important for this context uh, and for this spring school, uh, gender-based violence uh, in the family uh, uh, perpetrated by those male uh, persons who do who, who do commit uh, violence especially particularly within their families independently of their level of education as mm -hmm. one of uh, the comments said uh, at the beginning <coughs> uh, you think to say something more about these family only uh, perpetrators because they uh, they are portrayed um, actually i mentioned this uh, research uh that was conducted by our professor strand um it was a meta analysis what does that mean um she and one author more i can't remember his name her name they included um practically uh, all studies uh conducted that they could find in english and then try to see what is common for all studies in this respect, differences between perpetrators of domestic violence. And then they listed 
all uh, characteristics of those who commit uh, the violence only within the family. But um, when you read all of that, we would come to a conclusion that they are, they are not so, how to say, dangerous as are uh, the, the other category um, of antisocial. And you have a list of characteristics when it comes to employment, education, uh, psychological traits, when it comes to um, accepted masculinity values. And all of these uh, levels, they showed better scores than those who are, to say, generally wild. It is interesting. So uh, uh, practically, uh, so it, it was not only, I, I repeat, it was not only one research on a sample, I don't know, in Sweden. No, it consisted of all studies, criminological, that dealt with this issue. And then they tried to see what is common for all of these. Yes, what it is common that they are, uh, in all respect, uh, they achieve better results than uh, antisocial perpetrators, th those who commit uh, violence generally, not only within. When I say better scores, in what respect? To education, employment, uh, psychological characteristics, substance abuse. Uh, so there is a list of you know, 15, 20 characteristics uh, um, of, of what they have analyzed. So those better scores indicate that uh, the patriarchal background, independently of what these better scores say about them, uh, has been on, on agenda. All of them uh, have been inheriting uh, this uh, approach towards uh, women uh, based on patriarchal metrics of subordination, devaluation, and inherent uh, feature of patriarchal, hierarchical, uh, authoritarian uh, re uh, relations concretely speaking, uh, within families uh, in the patriarchal context. So also it means nowadays that patriarchal uh, matrix has been working very, <coughs> to say, uh, so, uh, so to say, unfortunately successfully within the context where, where also there are emancipatory elements. For example, you, you can have the family where you have both of the partners uh, being very well educated, but still that that woman has been uh, the victim of uh, the, the severe violence uh, committed by her partner. Uh, what we have to keep in mind here, I say they achieve better scores, and that means, you know, um, that in more cases, so we talk about statistics, in more cases, they, for example, are employed than the ones who are generally violent. That they uh, uh, have been previously convicted less often. That doesn't mean they weren't, but less often than the other category. You compare categories to see, you know, whether there are differences. But if you do that, you know, with statistical data, there are always exceptions. Uh, this is something like a, a general, how to say, uh, a general picture that they commit less serious violence, that they, for example, um, rarely commit sexual offenses against against uh, family members and partner, etc. That doesn't mean that 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 that, that uh, uh, never happens, but less often uh, uh, than than the other uh, uh, category. And this other category is good for the explanation of relation between violence against males and females, because these persons are ready to use violence against others, not just family members. That also then, if we want to go to gender perspective, that has to do with masculinity values, etc. <laughs> within one society. Uh, there are a lot of theories that could uh, explain that uh, as well. Um, but this is just <laughs> like a comparison, uh, what is less uh, and what is more often within these two categories. There is a third category, but I don't want to go further, uh, just to, to have this broad picture. Okay. Um, so now it is 
20, uh, almost 20 to 12. Maybe we should make the break now, the break okay. of uh, 15, 20 okay. minutes, okay. 20 or 15, 15 minutes, and then so our attendance online. So please have in mind that we will make break now and start again in 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay.